uh, my class today. This is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein. Most of you already know who I am. And today's theme is uh, we're going to talk about Grand Prix attack and various flavors of it, specifically new ideas that I've uh, come up with for my uh, brand new chessable course. Some of you may already know, some not. It's called the Grand Prix Attack Reloaded. I highly recommend for those who are Grand Prix lovers to uh, try to get this flavor. It's a completely fresh idea. And hopefully, uh, Coach Eugene, I played your Queen D3 in my last turn, but it went better than I lost. Oh, sorry to hear that, Austin. Next time, maybe. Next time, we'll try better. But Queen D3, yeah. We talked about Queen D3 against the Sicilian. Okay, maybe, Austin, this time you'll try the Grand Prix and it'll work better. I hate the Grand Prix as black. Okay, there we go. So you see, already a lot of people don't like to face the Grand Prix attack. All right, so we still have uh, some people joining us. Let me just quickly introduce to you the Grand Prix attack and give you some flavors of the different Grand Prix you will see. Uh, yes, there are some sidelines like the move E6. So let's take a look. So I have this one game that you see in my screen. This is gonna be kind of our main intro game that I played as a practice game against my friend Mitch. But I'll be jumping around a little bit through other um, uh, themes here, some strategy and tactics. And as always, I'll be asking questions in the chat. And please answer your questions in the chat. Uh, what is Mitch's rating? Uh, Mitch, I believe he's like, a, as Jesse Cry in the Chess Dojo world called him, the 2600 uh, opening uh, <laughs> GM. But in reality, he's more like somewhere between, you know, probably 2000, 2100 range. Um, let's see. So let's start. I think most people are already here. So, okay, the Grand Prix is the repertoire against the Sicilian defense. Again, this is my course, the Grand Prix attack reloaded that begins with E4, C5. And the move that I recommend against the Sicilian is the move Knight to C3. Now, why you may wonder knight c3 instead of knight f3, and the reason you will see shortly is after black's most common move, knight c6, black takes control over d4 square. We actually don't play g3. g3 would be called the closest Sicilian, right? g3, bishop g2, although I do recommend against certain setups, as I will show you later, this g3 move. Against the main line, I will recommend to you the move f4. Okay, f4 is the beginning of the Grand Prix. The black has many different setups. The most common one is g6. How many of you have seen this move g6 or even played this move g6? Okay, Joshua shows me. I played Rohan, Madison, me. I lost you 1300 when I was 1600 in this, Austin says. Seen it multiple times. All right, so d6 is also a move, by the way, besides, and e6 is another move. I play 2g6. Yeah, 2g6 may transpose. Rohan says, I lost a very important game on this line. There we go, guys. So see, this is critical. Now I play knight f3. And best, uh, the best move for black is bishop 2g7. So black firmly takes control over the d4 outpost. So let me give you a little bit of a brief history of the Grand Prix attack before I show you my recommended way of playing it these days for white. So I co-authored the book around 2005 called Chess Openings for White Explained. And I recommended with my co-authors, Grandmasters Jinji and Albert, this move, Bishop to B5, okay? So what is the point of the Bishop to B5? It's a very simple developing move. I have ideas like in the Nimzo to double by taking on c6, double black's pawns. Black will take one or the other way. I will castle. I will play d3. And notice when I build this pawn chain, later I may play queen e1, queen h4, f5. This bishop on b5, I don't really need that piece. And this was my recommendation. But over the years, this move knight d4, and a lot of you probably play it as black sort of took the thrill out of the Grand Prix attack. It's not that easy to attack anymore if Black knows what he's doing. 
In my opinion, Grand Prix attack is good for people who hate memorizing lines. I agree. Yeah, excellent point there. Completely agree. It's a concept-based opening. So this is the reason why I shy it away from bishop b5. But it is a very, very popular move. The other popular move is bishop c4. Hikaru Nakamura still plays this move in title Tuesday Blitz from time to time. He's got this pet opening because his stepdad, Sunil Viramanti, plays this. I actually face Sunil as black against this bishop c4. Very tricky setup. But if you know how to handle this as black, it's not that difficult because the key move here is e6. Right, Austin is correct. And the point after e6 is that even if white tries to provoke you to take that pawn, it's sort of known that black can just play knight g7. And after pawn takes, pawn takes, it's very, very difficult for white to gain an edge. Yeah, this bishop is sort of biting on granite, right? You see these two pawns? Again, white typically play, still plays this plan with queen e1, h4. It's not as powerful. It's still one of the ideas. Yeah, this is all well known. So I don't want to do that as well as white. So the move that I recommend in my Grand Prix Reloaded course is a very rare waiting move. The move that has only been seen uh, under 100 games in the database. Just to give you an idea, uh, if you look at the online statistics, Bishop B5 has been played 11,000 times. Well, that's a lot. Bishop C4 has been played 8,000. There's G3, there's D3. The move that I'm recommending here is this move A4, 84 games. Very rare move. Right? Very rare move. Let me just close this for a second. What is the idea of this move, guys? Who can try to guess? Some of you may already have my course. Any ideas? B3, Bishop A3, says Adi. This is an interesting idea. In some lines, it actually is not that uncommon, but it's quite rare, this B3. No, that's not the main point. Anika, Bishop C4, yep, this is one of the main ideas. The Bishop can hide on A2, good job, Anika. Wait for black to commit, absolutely the right answer. Wait and move, yes. So now, the moment black plays D6, which is a very typical move, uh, this is not the move that Mitch played, but I wanna show you this idea anyways. Now I play this move Bishop to B5, and I'm back to my Grand Prix ideas. I want to play d3. At some point, I want to double. I want to castle. A lot of people against me in blitz play this terrible move a6. Well, it's not terrible, but it's exactly what white wants. Let's put it that way. And I'm quite happy here. You see, this board on a4 is actually not that bad. I can later play a5 and fix some structure. So uh, most common move in this d6 line is this bishop d7 move. OK, and now. I play d3, and Anish Giri recommends this move a6 here in his Nidorf lifetime repertoire on Chessable. Most of you might have heard of that course. Some of you may even have it. And my kind of novelty, my fresh idea, is not to castle, because that enables Black to get really quick counterplay before White gets the attack going. So my fresh take on this is a5. It's a paralyzing move. If black ever plays b5, you just take on passant. And then white sort of goes for the main Grand Prix tricks. All right, so that's my idea against d6. So any questions so far? Again, please let me know in the chat if there's any questions. Okay, so let's focus on the main line. So the main line is by far e6. So what is black trying to achieve? Black controls the key vital square, right? Black wants to have this nice fluid development and castle and say, ha, 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 a4. I'm going to laugh at you for playing that 
that uh, useless developing move. It's not really developing move. Exactly what I want to see, guys. I want to see this move e6. And this is basically following my game against Mitch. Now, my main idea, and this is a fresh idea, is this move e5. So what I want is I want the knight to come to e4. I want to take over the dark squares, control the key dark squares, and make it very difficult for both of these bishops to get counterplay. Like these bishops may not get out. So in the game, Mitch sort of reacted expectedly by playing just developing IG7. This is just one out of three possible moves here. The two main other moves is undermining this business with d6. This is actually my main line in the uh, in the course on chessable. And this one d5 as well. Let's talk about d5 for a second. Who who can tell me what could be wrong with this move d5 in the chat? Is it en passant? Nope, it's not en passant. Uh, knight b5 is the right idea, but wrong execution. If you start with knight b5 right away, black can play bishop f8. And then a6 is next, and black can sort of slowly regroup. Oh, yeah, d5 does not attack the bishop on c4, Austin says. Very good. So Austin already tries to understand the difference between the bishop on c4 and on f1. And now white gets a very nice positional advantage with this pawn push d4. Let's promote this. C takes d. And now knight b5 with the big threat of check. And of course, simply taken on d4. This is called the dream fringe. Yeah, some of you already are noticing that in the chat. I've seen this before, says Joshua. Okay, good job. So bishop f8, we simply grab that pawn. If bishop e3, we're going to play, sorry, if bishop c5, we're going to play bishop e3 with a nice tactic. Knight takes c6 threat. So once again, they got to move that bishop. Already unpleasant position. White is clearly better. That's right, Austin. Yeah, Black was laughing at us for not developing. Now Black has moved the bishop how many times? One, two, three times. And still, knight takes c6 is a pretty serious threat. So this is clearly advantage for white. And uh, that's why Mitch played this move. So we're going to talk about d6 in a second. Let's first talk about this knight g7 move. <laughs> this line makes me want to switch from e4, c5 to e4, e5. Ah, okay, maybe. If you're going to be afraid of this, we're, we like it as white players for you to play something else. Uh, okay, what to do now? g4, I don't like g4. g4 is too weak and in. Black and play h5 undermine this business. Knight e4. That's what I played. We have a couple of threats aimed at Black's king. If knight f5, then g4. Perhaps, yes. Already a very uncomfortable position. And Mitch already makes a bad mistake. He plays question mark d5. So this move results in a very nice miniature win for me. And d5 is a clear mistake. He should have played castle. In this case, I would not play knight takes c5 because then black does get actually quite serious counterplay. Instead, uh, white can simply play move like bishop b5. And a6 just take and limit the scope of this knight with c3. And if black tries this like logical b6, I have this h4, h5 pawn storm. Harry the h pawn can say hello to the king. And uh, I can, I'm not sure if I want to start with h5 or maybe I can play d3 first or h5 next. 
but you get an idea. Queen c7, h5. I want to be able to attack re really fast. Uh, knight d6, I can always play. So this is a very nice position for white. So he should have castled, though. This is his best move. All right, let's get back to the game. How did white win this game quickly? All right, let's see. Some people are already replying in the chat to me. Kyle, okay, good job. Eric, yep, good job, Eric. Yeah, Joshua. Okay, most, most of you guys are seeing the main idea. Yeah, it's a simple dark square idea. Check, knight g5, and there's a big oops, and just like that, black is busted. So nine move, kind of miniature already because black is losing a lot of material. Mitch played on for a couple of more moves. With knight f5, I simply took. He went here, I grabbed the exchange. All right, here, white just needs to consolidate. I have overwhelming advantage already. So I just go back, overprotect the e5. He had some possible knight e5 tricks. Not the, maybe the only move for the advantage, but basically, I'll just show you how the game finished. Yeah, here he resigned, realizing that there's absolutely no hope left. All right, so this is instructive moment. And let me go and show you quick ideas against d6. So the main move besides d5 and ig7 is this move d6, which uh, I see here and there, especially like in blitz. The point is, of course, to try to trade the e5 pawn. But you already know the main ideas of the opening. You will guess white's next move, right, guys? The moment black plays d6, what do we do? Well, be careful about knight e4. Knight e4, d6, e5, you may lose a uh, material. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. I think people are getting getting hang of it. That's right, knight, bishop b5 first. So now taking on e5 is not recommended for black. We're going to take on c6 and ruin black's pawn formation. And then we can take on e5. And this is a great position. D3 is coming, right? Just look at this position. Total domination. Terrible pawns, terrible bishop. That looks pretty ugly. Yeah, so the most logical move now is to play knight g e7. Let's promote that. So today, guys, we're working on the Grand Prix attack. This is my Grand Prix attack reloaded course. I'm giving you some basic introduction in this lecture. And uh, we're going to be talking about various ideas for white and black. All right, let's see what people say. What's the good move for white? Yeah, here, knight e4 does look good. And it is my recommendation. Now, of course, black has to take. There's no need to take on c6 yet. This knight is well protected. We're going to take with the pawn. Black will castle. And now, what's the best move for white, guys? Let's see who can guess. Oh, some of you may already know if you already have bought my course on Chessable. Okay. Okay, good job. Yeah, I see some good answers already in the chat. Yep, so the best move it is to insert this little check. This is a very unusual move because it does require pawn sacrifice. Yes, yeah, so Austin is already showing a very interesting line. The point is if takes, takes here. Well, actually, first, we can take to double the pawns. We're going to castle. Queen takes. And this is a very pleasant initiative for white. Let's talk about, about this position for a second. Clearly, the pawn structure is ruined anyway, so his extra pawn is meaningless. This bishop is dead, right? Not much counterplay. Queen is going to get kicked around. And the main line in this variation goes like this, c4. This one I did analyze as well for my course. Knight b4, bishop c5, rook d8, bishop, I mean, sorry, bishop e3, rook d8, bishop takes c5, knight takes d3. And here we have one of the cool tactics. Can you guys find the tactics? 
tacti tactical idea rather, how can white win material? Knight e1 does not, I don't think knight e1 works. Maybe knight e1 also works. Let me try to figure out. It's not knight e1. What is wrong with knight e1? The idea is just to take on d3. I mean, maybe it's okay too. It's not, it's not better than the other move. Yeah, maybe it's just bishop a6 here, right? And then bishop c4. So no, the cleaner move here is rook a3. And again, thanks to the a4 move, remember a4 idea, the rook can swing over. And the main line goes like this. And this end game is quite unpleasant, very unpleasant. White should be able to convert. All right, so this is how one line can go. So taken is pretty risky for black, right? So most players, uh, at least in blitz, they kind of prefer just to move the king out of the way, leaving this knight, very strong knight on f6. Now though, guys, you gotta be extremely accurate. And this is why I love chessable, because if you make one inaccuracy right now, one wrong move, you may actually be worse as, as white. So the move that you should be training yourself is the very powerful idea for white. Let's see if you can figure it out. Uh, it's not castles. Castles is a big mistake, this big mistake, because knight takes e5, and there's this beautiful tactic. Oops, not good. Uh, h4, says Kyle, also not the best. Same problem, but different issue. This one, your knight is on pre on f6. And rook f1 is clearly inferior move for many reasons, right? You need the rook on the h file and you want, yeah, you don't really want to play rook f1. All right. Okay, Austin is correct. Uh, except the follow-up was wrong for Austin, but he got the right idea. All right, so people are getting close. Yep, I think most people are getting it. The key, guys, is to play aggressively and not worry about pawns. D4, X clamp. So we are sacking the pawn. And now we just play this calm move, bishop g5. Simple development. And guess what? He does not have queen a5 check. Picking up the bishop again because of the pawn on a4. You see how many lines this a4 pawn saves the day for white in addition to this rook a3 lift the pawn protects the bishop yep and the line continues most of you already see the point why we keep the rook on h1 h4 very unpleasant position i have to say because if you take you get checkmated mate so there are quite a lot of cool lines that i've analyzed from this position uh, Black has tried knight f5 against me. I think the best is just to take take and play h5. And if takes, takes, uh, how do they play? They play this way. Yeah, and now here's a cool move. You may appreciate this next move, queen d3. Was it queen d3? Let me try to remember. H5 takes, takes here. I want to say it is queen d3. All right, and here's my point. Let's say you play some random move. Now you have a force checkmate. Let's see who, who can figure out quickly. Um, queen takes f5, be careful. I don't think it's a, it's a checkmate. He can run to g6. Yep, a lot of people are already putting the correct answer in the chat. So boom, 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 mate. 
So yeah, this is one cool line. So you get an idea that why it's having all the fun on these lines. And there are quite a number of beautiful wins in various options. So this is very unpleasant position for black. So in a nutshell, this is what I'm trying to achieve with white. Of course, if black walks right into this, you have a very promising attack and very unpleasant position for black. Another cool line I want to show you is let's say black takes with a knight. Logical move to try to trade some pieces off. Now you will never guess my recommendation for white. Well, let's see what people are going to say in the chat. Maybe you guys can guess. After this lesson plus one hour of prep before my game, do you think I can play this against the GM next game? I don't know. Maybe. If you especially buy my chessable course, you'll, then you'll have the entire uh, repertoire. Wait, knight takes h7, what? Two people said knight, I don't understand. What's the point of knight? Were you giving me free piece? Yeah, so no, this is definitely wrong. Not knight e4. Why would you play knight e4 backwards? Well, but first of all, after knight h7, he can assert knight takes f3 check. Nope, it's not knight g5. Knight g5 is a reasonable idea, right? At least trying to throw pieces at the king, but it doesn't quite work. Not h4 either, not castle. Yeah, so you see, it's even hard for you to guess the right move unless you studied it in chessable. The best move is c3. It's a paradoxical move because I'm actually seeking an end game. Yep, knight takes b5, and I'm happy to trade queens. This is my recommendation. Now, very important intermezzo. The end game is horrible for black. Yeah, knight g5, threatening a little checkmate, force the rook back. A takes B, H6, and this position I claim as very unpleasant because black is getting suffocated. He's a pawn up, but first of all, look at his pieces. His bishops are pretty much dead. His rooks are not doing much. We got nice pressure, nice pressure, but look at this total domination in the center. So eventually white will start gaining material back, right? White's clearly better, but you know, black is not totally lost, of course, but it's just a very unpleasant position. So this is, again, you see how that a4 pawn is useful? That is protecting that bishop in this line? Very cool. So that pretty much covers all the main ideas in the main line. Of course, there's lots and lots of sidelines. That's why I said the entire course is unchessable. Black can try e6, this is a big one, followed by d5. Black can try a6 to stop this idea. In that case, I'm going to recommend this plan with bishop g2, d3, and then build up the attack against the king when the king eventually castles. And then e6 is another big chapter. Against this, I'm going to recommend knight g2. The point is to meet d5 with this. So this is another cool idea. And a lot of people don't play d5. They may play this or this. And then again, I'm going to recommend this fanchero. So it's, a, it's an entire repertoire. Ah, you play this as white? OK, so it's easier for you, Josh. All right, so now I don't want to bore you with like analysis and details, because I want, you to, I want you to start thinking tactically and strategically right away. So I'm going to move over to this board. So we just covered this punish and the central push, right? Everybody knows the answer to this one. So this is all covered already. Let me move on to this position. We talked about this. This is the good French pawn structure. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, good job. Everybody knows this one now. How about this position? This did occur in one of my games. It's called 
Uh, it's in the line where they play like f6, allow the check, king e7. We play b3, pawn takes bishop a3, queen a5, check. So whoever said b3, bishop a3 much, much earlier, you know, it's not a completely uncommon idea. So in blitz, I did play king f2, which is not the best move, guys. This is not the best. So here, white has a forced win. It's kind of hidden. It's a three move uh, idea. So three moves you have to find for white. First move is relatively easy. Second move is really difficult. Third move is, I think, um, not too bad. Uh, okay, so one, one idea people are saying, b4, knight takes. If queen d2, there's a big oopsies. Boom. So you don't want to allow this. Black wins. Ah, yeah. So I think people are getting clo closer to the answer. So now we need an intermezzo. We need c3. Yes. Another pawn sacrifice. So now the diagonal is locked up. What's the winning move? Yeah, queen b3 wins. This is just a deadly pin, period. This is just game over. Black has a lot of pawns, but his whole position is collapsing. And somebody said, uh, knight takes, knight takes, c8, intermezzo. It's actually wrong. It's actually wrong because, uh, well, you can do, well, it's not this move. This you have rook b1. So, no, it's it's king, uh, king d8, I think. And black is actually fine. Maybe black is even winning. So that's a difficult move from black. Maybe king d7 works too. Haven't checked this. Maybe this works too. Maybe king d8 is just easiest. Yeah, so c3 is, is winning. So this is a cool little tactic. All right, I want to show you this position. All right, so this one, you already know the answer. H4. Uh, but let's see. So everybody knows this is a basic checkmate now. Okay, but that's... What do we play against queen c7, guys? Rook pawns are mean. <laughs> so now e5 is under attack. Yeah, queen e2 is not bad. Well, the e pawn is quite, you got to be able to deal with e pawn. h5 right away may not work. Knight takes e5. It gets knight takes f3 check on some lines. I don't know. I don't think h5 is, is that good. No, there's a simple solution, guys. Simply get rid of that knight and protect the e pawn. And now when black plays a developing move, let's say b6, He's just dead in the water with this h5. Boom, blast open the king side. Can't do anything. We need to protect this guy. And that's it. Bad news for the, for the king. Okay, let's move on. All right, this one we just covered, right? Remember, it's rook a3 to take advantage of the spin. All right, so everybody remembers this one. Uh, this one we also just covered, c3. Knight g5 and a takes b. So it's good to remember this stuff here and here. Uh, in the previous one, uh, not a big difference. Bishop c6 or queen e2. All right, so here is the Death Star attack. This is the entire point of the Grand Prix. If black allows bishop b5, bishop takes c6, right? This position could happen. How do we continue the attack? Yep, queen e1, correct. So this is the beginning of our plan. So I call it the Death Star attack plan. So a6, typically the idea is to push for b5. You could play a5. In this specific case, once you have a target, you don't actually need to waste any time to play a5. 
Yeah, queen h4. You just give give away your entire queen side of the board. B5. Okay, f5. Good job. Is the attack weakened without the light square? Actually, it's actually not weakened because the key is you want this, this, and this. That's plenty. You don't need the light square bishop at all. So b4, knight e2, c4. Okay, guys, you probably don't need help with the next move. Let's see what people are going to say in the chat. Nope, knight f4 is wrong. Knight f4 is wrong. G4 is also wrong. Yes, bishop h6. You need this to key. The key idea is to destroy that defender. Okay, let's say black says, okay, prove it. I'm going to make a couple more moves for black. You guys should be able to beat me now. Are you scared? Are you scared of these pawns? C4, B3. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Is it bishop takes? Aha, there is a little debate. Is it bishop takes or knight g5 first? This is important. This is important. Yes, knight g5 first. It's very important to take it only at your most convenient moment. If you start with this and this, he may have this h6 idea. You don't want to allow any of this business. Right? You don't want the h pawn to move. All right, so prove me. Prove me wrong. We'll just take a pawn. Can you finish me off, guys? Not uh, rook f3 is too too slow. This is just the forced win. I'll give you a hint. The last move of a nice forcing sequence is checkmate with the pawn. I'll give you a hint. And this is how my line ends in my course <laughs> in this position. See if you can guys figure that out. Relatively four sequence too. It's a beautiful checkmate though. Checkmate that you should be able to frame and uh, put in the front of your computer. It's a really fun one. Again, the power of the Death Star attack. All of these pieces are instrumental. All right, one person already got it in the chat. Good job. Excellent. Yeah, good job, David, too. All right, I think people are getting close. So last move of, of your solution should be checkmate with the pawn. Okay, I think most people are getting there. I think you guys are getting there. Good job. Yeah, so we take, we take hg. Well, fg is just knight e6 fork. Right, so hg. So we, we yeah, you can take... Uh, Bishop takes g7 first, yeah. All right, now what? Boom. This is the whole point of your setup, by the way. This rook takes f6 sack because the king has to go for a little walk. This is just checkmate in one. And now there's more than one way to win, right? I said the most beautiful one is to checkmate with the pawn. The king goes for a walk, and here we go. This is everybody's dream or finishing of the game with the king right in the middle of the board and you checkmate with a pawn. Now tell me that this is not the most beautiful checkmate you've ever seen. It's definitely one of the most beautiful ones. So, and it could happen. It could happen from this line. Definitely one of the most beautiful ones. 
And yeah, the black can't really do much about this attack. Once you've lined up this Death Star, the queen, the bishop, the knight, the rook, black can hardly move. What if black ever played queen d7, so there's no fork? You mean like queen g7 here? Yeah, black can do that. So let's answer this question. There's no fork on e6 now. How do we win the game? I think it's the same exact method. Boom. Same exact way, right, guys? EF is made in one. Rook takes is basically made in two. King takes, we already are in the same exact idea. King here is made, and king here is checkmate. So that does, does that answer your question? So hopefully that answers your question. So yeah, this is called the Death Star attack. Again, to quickly review, what happened earlier? Earlier happened, what? The bishop was on b5, black played d6, knight c6, bishop d7, we took, we got the queen to e1. And here, black sort of ignores white's attack, allows us to build a Death Star. And uh, once this is built, this position is completely lost. And I mean completely lost. Black can't escape. Even if you turn the engine on, I don't think black can get out of this one. All right, so let's move on. I want to show you some other ideas. Are there a lot of GMs that play this? Actually, the move A4 in my recommendation, very rare. Only one GM, uh, not really that well-known GM who played it, but yeah, nobody really plays it. All right, so this is a sideline that we, I, I mentioned. Remember how black can play knight c6, e6, a6, and we're going to put the bishop on g2. So here, white has a very cool thematic idea to break up black's structure. Let's see if you get, can get us. How can white break open the position? And the correct move here is f5, brilliant idea. Well, if black takes with a knight, which is going to get a nice advantage. This deep one is really weak. We've got two bishops. White is a little bit better, but it's not the end for black. Black can probably hold on. But the most beautiful line, if they take with a pawn, this is a big mistake. Now we destroyed the defender, and everybody knows this checkmated pattern from probably doing lots and lots of puzzle rush. Here, here. And it's game over. My favorite way is this. Yeah, everybody sees this instantly. Good job. All right, let's move on to a different one. Here's another typical position from this line. Remember, again, if they play knight c6, e6, a6, we're going to fanchetta. We're going to build things up. They're going to execute this b5, b4 push. Our knight is going to go to d1, f2. Both sides sort of have this dream position. White has a monster break the chain concept. What's your highest puzzle rush? My highest puzzler? I don't know. 40 something. Uh, does the pawn on f4 help white or black? As opposed to normal King's Indian tax structures and bishop on f4. Well, yeah, here the pawn on f4, you're not getting your typical King's, in, King's, uh, King's Indian attack, right? You have a totally different idea. Yes, f5. f5, okay, remember this idea. At some point, you want to sack with f6 and break open the king. And if they play rook f8, you can just build up. Now f6 is in the works. Timely f6 push, or you can just build up with h4, g4. And if they take, the point, of course, is bishop f4, followed by e6. Very, very annoying. 
All right, so this is the best line for white. All right, how about this one? Now, this one is taken from when they play in the e4, c5, knight, c3, knight, c6. They play e6, d5, right? And then the knight is going to get pinned with the bishop. We play e5, and then we take, we double those pawns. At some point, black got to play the f6, f takes e. Here, it's a cage the bishop idea. How can we kill this bishop for the rest of the game? Not bishop h6, nope. It's a positional idea. a4, a5, a6, uh, no. Knight e2, be careful, yeah. Close. I would say this is a very common Nimzo. If you're a Nimzo player, for you, this idea is very easy. Yeah, Kevin, good job. Okay, Austin is getting it. Good job, Austin. Yeah, so most people got the right idea. Some people said knight d1. Some people said knight e2. With the idea to play c4 and kill the bishop. It's knight a4. This is the Nimzo idea. You want to target that c5 pawn. Okay, you said that. Good job. So bishop a6, c4. Bye-bye, bishop. What if bishop sacks the pawn? This is probably blocks idea but you don't have to take on c4 the beauty of this position is you're just dominated uh maybe even not knight d4 right away because he plays rook takes f1 check right so maybe some bishop move yeah like bishop e3 or something and then you have this cool idea knight e4 getting this rook in the game so this is un unpleasant for black Maybe this is his best try anyways, but kind of unpleasant. Yeah, maybe this bishop h6 in this, although I don't know, this one you got to calculate here, here. First of all, he can sack or he can take and then take. I don't know. This one you got to calculate. This may be simpler. Right? This is much easier. All right, just positional concept. Here's another one. This is where they put the knight on e7. They will play ed, ed. Pins make wins. Pins make wins. How, this is like a hint. How can you use the pin to your advantage? This is a positional, yeah, not tactical, purely positional. Castle's rookie one, close, no. D4, also close, nope. Not d4, not castles. There's another really cool move. All right, Kevin, you got it. Good job, Kevin. b4, what? b4 is a little crazy. Nope, I already said it's not d4. 90, 95, good idea, but not 95. All right, Daniel, you got it. Good job, Daniel. Yep, Kyle got it too. Arvin, good job. Yep, it's queen e2. This is a very unpleasant move. White pins the second knight. Black is really pinned up, guys. Very unpleasant position. I actually won a game like this against a grandmaster. He played uh, g6, and I followed up with another cool idea. Who can tell me what I played against g6? This one, you if you've never seen my course, you may not know. This idea is a little bit unusual. But no, people are guessing it. Good job, guys. The right move is queen e5. Whoops. Poor rook has to go. And then you just double and castle. And black is worse. He's not lost or anything like that, but clearly very unpleasant to play with the king stuck in the center. And we still have this weakness to work with. Yeah, it's plus equal for sure. All right, maybe I'll show you a couple more examples. And then we'll call it a day. Here's another one. This is uh, Christopher Yu playing white. He got this position against um, Daniel Naraditsky. I might have shown you this idea before. Yeah, it's a crazy pawn sacrifice here. Does anyone know this idea? 
why to move? I do, says Josh. Okay. Oh, how do you know this, Josh? You've seen the game? Ah, you play. This is your repertoire. Okay, I got it. Good job. Okay, who else? B4. Wow. No, not B4. This is a little bit strange. Yep. Okay. So one person knows this. The correct move is bishop g2. White is badly pinned, and we're giving up our centralized pawn. Uh-oh. This looks bad, doesn't it, for white? Plus, black controls this f3 square. Yet, guys, believe it or not, this is still part of theory, and this is the best line. Anybody knows what to play next? And it's not castles. That would be too easy, right? If castles was in. It's not an easy move. It's h3. <laughs> all right. But the line keeps going. For First of all, there's a little trap. The trap is this. This is the trap that everybody can figure out pretty easily. You and a piece. So the question is, what to do against bishop f3? And now the final move, which is quite difficult. So none of these moves I said are easy. Uh, again, a lot of people will say castles, but it's not castles. Too easy. Castle will be too easy. Uh, rook h2. No, that's a little bit too much. Yep, Josh remembers. ID is correct too. It's a very unusual move I have to sell. All right, Eric has the right idea. It's not bishop takes f3 though. All right, guys, the move is king f1. Now, talking about a move that will shock your opponent, I will guarantee you that king f1 is definitely in that category. So who can explain to me why king f1 and why not castle? Austin's asking a good question, guys. Can anybody explain this? No, it's not really king g1, king h2. Yeah, so one of the ideas is knight takes e2 is not check. Yeah, you figured that out. And the point, of course, if they take, you take with the king and the rooks come in here. Another cool idea is if they play, uh, let me try to remember. Well, this is how the game went, right? Between Christopher U and Naraditsky, and then C4 and Rook B1 are the main ideas. This is advantage for white. And if they play, what was the other line? If they take, I guess if they play, let's say Knight F6, who can tell me against Knight F6? How does white continue here? There's a really cool idea. All right, you're going to look at your file. All right, Josh is going to look at your file. I guess this is in your, in your file. Uh, Bishop e3, not quite. Bishop g5, interesting. Simple. We take, we go there, attacking the knight, attacking the deep one, and just bishop e3. And this pawn is about to be lost, or we take here. White's not going for a big edge, guys. White's just going for a plus, small plus. 
So you just want the d5 pawn and the nice outpost for the knight. So I believe this is how the line goes. Well, this is one of the most trickiest lines. Again, clearly, if you don't know this one for white, it's not easy to figure it out. Some of you have seen this before. All right, let me show you one other idea. All right, this one, thematic kingside attack. Again, this is where both black played a6, b5, white played bishop g2, black executed this knight d4, right? So everybody can pretty much guess this happened there. And then white started pushing his pawns. So the question to everyone is how does white continue? Again, it's very thematic, right? Meaning that this idea is good to know for just general understanding of these structures. Uh, not F takes E6. F takes E6 does give black adequate counterplay. Rook F2 is a little slow. All right, so most people think are getting it. So the correct one is F6. You want to take advantage of Black's weakened king. Pawn sacrifice. Okay. Well, in this uh, game, Black played Bishop of Fate that I use for my model games chapter. But if pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, Bishop G5 is really, really annoying. So this is just bad position. All right, let's talk about Bishop of Fate for a second. The next sequence of moves is relatively easy. I take. Um, no, I don't think you want to play g6 here. He can just take. Yeah, that's too much. So we take, he takes, and now you can guess the next move. Knight h5. White has already big attack against the king. I think in the game, black played either bishop h8 or bishop e5. I actually don't remember which move. And white just builds up. You can play bishop f4 and such. The king is just too weak, and white already has a promise in attack. Um, maybe knight f6 check you can too as well, but bishop f4 looks good. Now let me just find some other one. Ah, this is another thematic one. Let's say your opponent doesn't know what to do. They played e6, you play g3, and they play g6, right? How can you punish this? This is an important way. So again, e4, how to go f4, f4, c5, knight c3, knight c6. Or, or no, uh, it was e4, c5, sorry, knight c3, e6, knight g2, knight c6, g3, g6. Yeah, this is how they got here. Aha, uh -huh. Austin knows this. Good job. Nate knows this. Good job, Nate. Arvind. Anybody else? Anika. Good. Yeah, so most people know this. So the point is, if black does not have time to control the square, we play d4. And this is called Swiss cheese, guys. Swiss cheese, lots of dark holes for our pieces. Knight's coming to b5. And this is bad news. Plus over minus the control of the critical d6 square. Swiss cheese, yeah. And if they play uh, a6 to stop you from going there, I think the correct sequence is to take, take, and insert queen d4. And again, black is having really difficult job with the king side. All right, so I think I don't want to go too deep with all of this stuff. I just, this is kind of an introduction. And this is probably a good time to stop. So, again, the summary is the Grand Prix attack is an interesting opening. And the point is in the main line, my move A4, very rare move, but basically the ideas are all the same to try to get the attack information we love when black plays d6. I covered some sidelines, some common ideas. So you can start playing this right away. Uh, I'm actually going to put a link 
in the, I think maybe you guys can put a link in the chat. I don't have it handy. Uh, it's called Grand Prix Attack Reloaded on Chessable. So if, if somebody who has access, just put it uh, as a link for everyone to check out this course. I believe it's still on sale during the candidates. Right now, uh, lots of Chessable courses are on sale. Uh, Austin put it there in the chat. All right, guys, so click on that link and you can uh, immediately start learning all the lines. Okay, so thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.